Hey guys, I wanted to talk today about a very low risk investment where you can even receive eight to 12 to 16% returns in a low risk environment. And this is the step above investing in high yield savings accounts and money markets. You're stepping into the stock market, but you still don't have as much education as you would like to be able to really understand buying individual companies. And I would call you an income investor. An income investor is one of the eight styles of investing that I've put together here on my uh, free spreadsheet. If you'd like to take a quiz and try to figure out what type of investor you are, this is a free quiz. You don't need an email. There's no password or username or anything. Just click the link in the description, go over to Google Drive, press file and make a copy. And then you can take the quiz yourself and try to figure out which type of investor you are based on your risk tolerance and how you answer the questions and also also how much you know about the stock market. Hey guys, my name's James and I'm a licensed chemical engineer and I really enjoy investing in the stock market. My journey into the stock market began with one of my company's 401ks where my engineering and analytical background really helped me understand key stock market information. My goal with this YouTube channel is to help you become a better, more responsible self investor. So here we are on the spreadsheet that is for free. Just click file, make a copy answer these questions and this box will change here depending on your answer to these questions and it'll tell you which type of investor you are we recently went over the hands-off investor we're taking a look at the income investor today and what type of investments they would be investing in what type of yields they could expect now the income investor is a little bit higher risk than the hands-off investor and they know maybe a little bit more about the stock market. They know they want to achieve more than just inflation beating interest rates. So coming over to this spreadsheet right here, the income investor, they're going to be investing in ETFs or exchange traded funds such as SVOL, JEPI and SPYI. And I'll go over each individual ETF here on their web page and take a look at the stock market information over on Seeking Alpha. Now, right now, the annual yield estimated for SBOL is between 14 and 16 percent. So that means for every $10,000 you have, you can expect around $1,500 per year. And they do pay out that 14 to 16 percent in monthly dividend payments. But one of the cons of uh, investing in income funds is you really have no capital appreciation unless you reinvest the dividends. So your $10,000 invested right here isn't going to grow. The only growth it's going to come from is from the yields. Whereas if you were to be a blue chip investor or an ETF index investor, you would have some capital appreciation on top of your dividend yields, but with a little bit more risk. So real quick, just an example of what you can expect. If you had $10,000 and your yield was anywhere from this 6 to 16%, Let's say it was 11.2%, you would yield over the course of a year, 12 months, $1,120. And if you had the time, go ahead and pause the video and take a read of this. This is just a quick definition of what an income investor is. Now I want to jump over to some of the stock websites for these three different ETFs. Now, one of my most favorite ETFs is JEPI, it is a very risk free way to be able to get some. Uh, a fairly decent dividend yield with a very well managed ETF. As with most income ETFs and with JEPI, there's going to be some type of on options contract being used to be able to give you those high dividend yields. Just a, a real quick read here. Disciplined options overlay implements written out of the money S&P 500 index call options that seek to generate the distributable monthly income. Basically, they're telling you that they write some sort of call option out of the money call option on the S&P 500 and the income generated from that, they're going to pay you a dividend. Now, one of the attractive things of JEPI is they do get to around 7% to 8% yield over 12 months, and they do have a very low expense ratio at 0.35%. It's going to be the lowest expense ratio of the three funds that we look at today. Heading over to Seeking Alpha and Seeking Alpha is one of my favorite stock income websites. It has anything and everything that you'd like to know about the stock market. It goes into the financials of an ETF or an individual stock. It goes into the dividends, the dividend history. It even goes into different 
ETFs that are similar to the stock or security that you're looking at. So for instance, JEPI, here's five very similar ETFs that you can take a look at. If you are interested in JEPI, you may be interested in these five as well. And another thing that I like about Seeking Alpha is that they do have articles and the articles, uh, you may have one or two free articles that you can read, but after that, you'll have to start paying. And I am a annual subscriber and I can get you a discount if you head down into the description for the first year, I can give you an intro offer. So go ahead and click it and sign up for Seeking Alpha and sign up for the best stock analysis website out there if you're interested. The next ETF I wanted to talk about is SVOL, Simplifies Volatility Premium ETF. They offer the highest yield, but they also offer the highest expense ratio. And they're employing some type of option contract as well. In their definition of their ETF, they talk about option overlays and also a call option strategy. Just a small little paragraph that I think explains SVOL very well. We believe many traditional sources of income are failing to meet investor needs in today's low yield environment. SVOL aims to provide an attractive income stream and source of diversification while seeking to avoid risks inherent in other income producing asset classes. Taking a look at some of the financials for SVOL over on Seeking Alpha, expense ratio 1.16, dividend yield 15.98. And as you can see, and I wanted to jump back over to JEPI, you can see the uh, almost the entire life of JEPI, the fund hasn't really moved for about four years. It started at $50 and in four years, it's gone up to 56, but you've had some highs and lows. So I wouldn't expect any capital appreciation from your investment. As soon as it goes up, I would expect it to come right back down. It's just the fund was meant for the dividend income. Very, very similar to SVOL, the fund went up and then came back down. And I imagine if there's any upswing, there's it's going to swing right back to probably around the $20 to $25 figure. So I wouldn't expect very much capital appreciation. Most of the effort for this ETF is going to be in the dividend yield. And last but not least, we have Neos's SPYI another high income ETF. If you take a look at the max chart, you can see that the ETF has only been around for almost 10 months, coming up on its first year anniversary. And again, very flat, sitting around that $50 mark, but the annualized yield is almost 12%. And the expense ratio is between SVOL and JEPI. And real quick, I just wanted to feature my self investors workbook. I'm here to try to help you become a better self investor. And this is one of the workbooks that I offer on Patreon. Uh, we're going to do a quick comparison of JEPI and SVOL. So this is my compound interest analysis calculator. If you do download the spreadsheet, I do have video instructions for all of the spreadsheets. If you type in the ticker symbol right here under number one and two, put in the current dividend yield and the current expense ratio, put in monthly addition, and I'm gonna assume no annual growth rate or no capital appreciation in your principal. If you reinvest the dividends, an initial $10,000 deposit, let's say your age was 20, when you were 30, you can expect around this much in JEPI and SVOL in this very low risk. And then you can also see what type of income you would be reinvesting into the stock. If you weren't in a tax sheltered environment, this is what you would have to pay taxes on. This would be your income or your increase. So that is the income investor. We talked about the hands-off investor in a previous video. And in future videos, we're gonna talk about the remaining six styles of investing. And with that, thanks for watching.